Scranton, Scranton, Italia. Did you hit record? All right. <laughs> well, <laughs> fucking awesome show with Barry. Yeah. We're going to do a follow-up here, follow-up show now. Yeah. Uh, it's just it's, like, how this all fell into place is pretty freaking unbelievable. We definitely got to... We gotta think of something for Linda. I think we're gonna send her coffee. I think we gotta oh, yeah. send her flowers. Yeah. Um, we gotta give her a big thank you. More, more than a phone call. That's cool. All right, but let's get going. <laughs> Welcome back to 217 South Mills. We're doing sort of a follow-up bonus episode based on our what we previously just did interviewing Coach Barry Alvarez. Absolutely. And our podcast 217 is brought to you by Kevin Coffee Altuna. Located at 2922 Meadowlark Lane in Altoona, Wisconsin. I really thought with all those twos you were going to get a little confused. You know confused. what? Every time I say those together, I almost screw it up. But uh, You held it together. You did good. So let's get into this interview we just did with Coach Alvarez yeah. from Linda Wilkins his old secretary at the University of Wisconsin, you know, from reaching out that first phone call, we thought it was flipping a coin, but we're like, screw it. We're going to flip that coin. And, you know, the answer is always no until you ask the question. And we asked, and she's been a saint for everything she's helped us do. Uh, to him getting here, let's let's address, yeah, let's let's address that. that right away. So uh, <clears throat> previously in our podcast, we talked about, you know, uh, never being late and that 15 minutes – being being ready to go before the scheduled time so we're up here we're all set up we're waiting to go um and like oh you should be here we'll head down there in like 10 minutes we're going to be 20 minutes ahead of time just to make sure that we're here because we're thinking based on our schedule and based on what we said on the show we're thinking we said just to go the exact times we said 10 o'clock yep. linda tells him 10. yep his schedule we, we were i was informed that it was put in the schedule 10 o'clock so we both agree he's probably showing up at 9 45. correct so we say we're going to get downstairs 9.35, maybe 9.40 at the latest, but we're going to be five to ten minutes early. Absolutely. We're up here sort of putting stuff together, dilly down a little, just trying to get ready to do the show, and we get a text at 9.28, I'm in the lobby. I'm in the lobby. And we're like, oh, shit. And it was that, it was that, oh, shit, I'm late again, or I'm late for practice, or I'm late for weightlifting. Yeah. So, I mean, I didn't even have, like, my shirt on, so I was – flying around here trying to get dressed and run the door uh but yeah i'm texting him back and the moment i hit send, i'm like we'll be right down send i get a pit in my stomach thinking <laughs> he might have us run in the parking lot before we come up to do the interview <laughs> like i'm just that it was crazy but uh so we go down we meet him we bring him up he's got his good buddy danny who's been friends with him forever and uh yeah it was just all a hit we shot the shit a little bit before the show started and then as they're going to see when, when that episode drops, we had an absolute blast. I mean, he was the coach we always knew. He still is that same guy. Yeah. That attitude, the just dedication to football, to the University of Wisconsin. It was just a blast. It's remarkable, too. His memory on things is yes. so spot on. I think you made a, a – I made a mistake made on a, mistake on a, a year on who a, we were playing. Yeah, it was Ohio State. You said 19, and he said he cut you off at 17. 17. Yeah. Like – I've been saying 19 for 20 years. Sharp as a hat. Yes. Like, more, probably sharper than we are. Like, I guarantee hands that. Yes. Down. Guarantee like, it. His memory is just. Yeah, he's insane. going back talking about high school coaches he remembers and talking about. He's talking about recruiting uh, his time at Iowa, his time at Notre Dame under Lou Holtz. Just all those little details. I think it, I was just even excited. I knew he was laid back and he was going to be comfortable doing this just with the whole setup leading up to it. But some of the stories he told, uh, I think that just haven't been told before, like right. talking about Urban Meyer's schedule. And I didn't even know Coach Alvarez and Urban Meyer had a relationship, let alone a relationship close enough where Coach Alvarez is going to call him out for – call out Urban Meyer for you're working too hard. Yeah. You know, you need to relax. You need to celebrate the wins, yep. enjoy the wins, and and take it in. So, yeah, it was yeah. it was and, great. And I couldn't help but go back to 20 years ago when we were – his players, like my mind went right back there. It was just like the coach is like – we were in, in college football all over again. Absolutely. I mean, there were times in the interview, we were having a blast. We had a decent setup and, and a plan going in, but we also knew it was going to be a conversation. But, yeah, I got nervous a couple times. Like, 
am I talking too much? Oop, did I interrupt them there? You know, it's like, it's still Coach Alvarez to us. You know what I mean? It's still Coach. Were you talking too much? I know. Well, I know I do is now, that, but. Is that even, that should be on the forefront of your mind at the beginning of every one of your conversations. I understand. Like, but, but, but when I take it back and when he takes it back, the couple of times I was in his office, yeah, I didn't talk that much. You know, I listened and I said yes or no. And I went about my business. You know, it wasn't like we had too many lengthy sit down conversations over oh, the yeah. years. And mostly when you do, we're usually the quiet little mice trying to absorb all the stories, but obviously doing a show like this, you have to talk and, you know, and it's, you know, like we've been having fun, but yeah, as the audience knows, like this is, that was our first big time guest. And yeah. we're already talking about, you know, a ton of big opportunities down the road, but uh, yeah, so it's like you're trying to remember the questions, think about it, but you're also enjoying the moment mm -hmm. that Coach Alvarez is sitting right here right. in between us. And just, we're in Naples, Florida. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like On location, 217, yeah, on location. On location in, in Naples, Naples Florida. Florida. You know, like we <laughs> left Cabin Coffee to come to Naples, Florida yeah. to interview Barry Alvarez. Absolutely. I mean, who would have thunk that four months ago? Not you know what I mean? Like we didn't even have a podcast four months yeah. ago. Didn't have a Facebook page, didn't have anything. Now... We're on uh, Spotify. We're on Apple Podcasts. We're all over social media. You know, people are blowing us up. We're even connecting with old fans that from these stories, they're bringing up memories. Wow. We're seeing it on social media. We're seeing it on direct messages and text messages. It's just an absolute blast. And ultimately, it just shows you what a fraternity the University of Wisconsin football program has because we're putting stuff out there, and we have our old coach on here. And the amount of feedback that we get from guys that played in our era after us and before us has been has been amazing because every person from any every generation that played under Coach Alvarez can relate or at least relate to college football at Wisconsin. Absolutely. And like you said before, the fraternity, I always use the word family, same, same difference. It's just, yeah, that 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 family, that fraternity, that bond mm -hmm. just never leaves. And yeah. and I've said before, you know, I had the opportunity to play a couple of years in the NFL. And that was business. Those were jobs. They were mostly coworkers. Now, yes, did I remain friends with some of them? Absolutely. But with the Badgers, you're family for life. And oh, yeah. there's guys, we go back for events, and there's some guys you haven't seen for 20 years, and it's like it was yesterday, and you're just seeing your brother again. Okay. Doesn't matter whether they're up or down, good or bad, you're still family. You went through thick and thin together, and you're just going to be brothers for life. And it's the way it is. It's very cool. And then obviously, off the air, we were able to go and have uh, breakfast one-on-one uh, -on -one with Coach and his friend Danny, and that was a cool experience. That was awesome. It, Danny was absolutely wild. <laughs> the guy's got some stories. He's been around. I mean, he, the, the stories he brought up, the <laughs> stories he got Coach Alvarez talking about, and obviously some of them we got to clear with Coach before we put out there. But and Coach, I, I don't know if he's regretting what he said now, but he's like, why didn't we just do it at my house? So we're already planning. We're going to be releasing a date probably for next year that I think we might be coming back down to Naples, uh, but we are going to have Danny on the show. Yeah, Danny, when I called uh, back to the University of Wisconsin, I guess he's known as the Greek back in Wisconsin. Greek? So I think next time we come down here, we're going to have me, you, Coach, and the Greek on the podcast and just have a blast, talk about stuff. Uh, you know, I really enjoyed his take on what's currently happening in college football, like just a different atmosphere, the NIL, the transfers, and I really liked what he said. That, especially with the transfers, you're going to coach them the way you want to coach them. If they want to leave, it was, it was almost as if he was – because he was describing him talking to the coaches within the University of Wisconsin. And he didn't say it, but it was almost like if they want to leave, fuck them. Or coach better and build a better relationship with and those kids. I think kids. that that was the huge part. Build – your job as a coach is to build, maintain that relationship – and, and, and for you to build loyalty. Yes. Which is what it is. Absolutely. You know, and like so, we said, you know, you brought up earlier when we, I think it was during our recruitments when we brought up transfers, that when we committed, we were given our word yeah. and we weren't going to go back on it. I mean, I can't even imagine how drastic something would have to be. It wouldn't be losing a starting job. It wouldn't be, you know, being a backup. I can't even imagine something so drastic where I'd say, I don't want to be, I want to go to another yeah. college. Can't imagine that. Now, granted, I, I never had millions of dollars thrown in my face to go somewhere else, but I'd still like to say with that relationship we had between us and coach and us and our teammates, right. it would be very difficult. I think for many of us to <clears throat> ask to go somewhere else. I can tell you, like, I think the loyalty was very similar to military or law enforcement, which I was in. Yes. You do have those bonds when you go through the stuff that we went through um, and they're still stronger than ever. And I think it's, 
it's not the highlight of my life to to have played under Coach Alvarez at, at Wisconsin, but I can tell you, it is one of the more special ones in my life. Absolutely, you know, you know and, that. and that's what's you know we talked about on the podcast how he did a really good job of we talked about like after wins and he brought up, he even brought up, which I didn't really know. And it was interesting to hear that 93 team that after 94 Rose bowl, uh, how he felt he and his coaching staff allowed everybody coaches himself, players to enjoy that win too long right. and almost rest on your laurels. And he clearly did not allow that with us. And like I said, I mentioned on the show, I remember vividly him saying, all right, fellas, we're going to go home. We're going to celebrate tonight. When we're going to go home, you guys got, about two and a half, three weeks left of mm -hmm. winter break. You're going to celebrate. But when we come back, we are going to work and we are going to make history by winning back to back in the right. Big Ten, back to back Rose Bowls. And we did. And, you know, I'm glad, you know, it's like everything happens for a reason. And, you know, we want every Wisconsin team to win, but I'm glad he went through what he went through and what he learned to help us overcome that and not deal with, uh, you know, resting on your laurels mm -hmm. and just continue to fight, work, and Always improve your skills. How about just his intelligence on so many things? Yeah, like the uh, the game in uh, Japan. Yes, and the uh, glasses and the resetting, like your internal time clock. And he said either he read an article or heard it from NASA or, or somewhere, gathered yeah. this information and then implemented it, like in such a big game. Like yeah. as an outsider, you'd be like, "What the hell." Well, yeah, even talking with our Albanian friend that we have down here, uh, we brought up what would that have looked like 30 years ago? Right. I mean, today, that's smart. Mm -hmm. Today, I mean, there's so many. It just seems like there's so many different titles, both at the college level, the NFL level. There's so much more technology. Uh, I mean, hell, when we were in college, and I tell this to people, when you see the players looking at stuff on the sidelines, you used to see – or I'm trying to think. Maybe did we see pictures in college? No. No. We, we just had Hubes. Hubes would just draw up the defense. So yeah. we didn't even have pictures. Hubes would draw it on a, a dry erase board. When I was in the NFL, you'd get two pictures. You get a picture right before the snap, so mm -hmm. you see everybody in their stance. You see the way the defense is lined up, and then the second picture was taken maybe two seconds after a snap, where you could see which direction guys were going or if the right. line black back was blitzing. Now they have tablets on the sidelines. Mm -hmm. They're watching the play, dragging their finger, rewinding, fast forwarding. So the technology is there. And you look back. Now let's take it back to that Japan game 30 years ago to be like, I'm going to rewind my player's clock. By he said they estimated up to eight hours they get, they gained all because wearing sunglasses. Yeah. And by the end of it, wearing them eight hours a day to class. I and mean, then not having him sleep on the plane. Yes. And while the other how team, about this? the other team's on the freaking plane with them. Yes. I, I, you know what? I did hear that a long time ago, but I forgot. And I guess it was like a 747, whatever the bigger jets were. And they were in two different compartments. But then hearing about our guys who are all awake, probably walking up and down the aisle, chugging water to yeah. say hydrate. They go up there looking. They're just all passed yeah. out like it's a slumber party yeah, awesome. in the upper cabin. It, yeah. So for him to think all that stuff through, to be that type of coach to say, I'm going to gain any edge yeah. that I can to get a win, just unbelievable. But yeah, to our <laughs> back bouncing around. Back to that lunch, I said, I almost wish we just, you know, like I know we got some snapshots, beautiful picture of all of us together, just showing our uh, how grateful we were to mm -hmm. do the show with them. Hey, Joe, what the heck does it mean when you say Cabin Coffee Altoona is a roastery? Are you making fun of the coffee or something? Come on now, Bill. Sounds to me like you've had one too many shots to the head. It means we're a roastery. We buy our beans green from all over the world and roast right here on site. It's the freshest coffee you can get. Is that why one place I used to go to tasted burnt and the other place tastes like brown flavored water? That's exactly why, Bill. So stop on down to 2922 Meadowlark Lane, Cabin Coffee Altoona. Just remember, folks, everything's better at the cabin. But I wish we had a camera in that restaurant. Holy cow. Yeah. We think the podcast was good. The <laughs> restaurant was even better than the podcast with some yeah, of the stories coming some out. Some of the stories were unbelievable. I mean, just we, you know, him digging deeper into that first press conference. You know, telling stories about reporters, telling stories about even the attitude he had coming in, uh, you know, the job offers he had and how he came here and how he was talking. He was going to turn the program around. And I guess that was the backstory. I just thought, man's got big balls coming in. He's going to he's going to put it up and then he's going to show it and yep. produce afterwards. But he had he had many opportunities. And then the way he carried himself 
people started almost going against them before he even coached the game. Yep, so that sort of is what we got out of that after the interview story is like, that's what motivated. He even said like how tired he was from all the traveling he was doing and he had to get out to Wisconsin mm -hmm. for that press conference. And it was the attitude that he was receiving that almost pissed him off basically. Yep. And that's what fired him up and motivated him to make that comment. And now that comment will probably be in Wisconsin history forever. I mean, I could see 100 years from now, they still go back to that video clip because you got to think that is when the program changed. 100%. And we know the program, you're going to have up years, you're going to have down years. Hopefully we continue to climb and we continue to, you know, we we get to the point where we're in the playoffs and we're contending for a national championship, but we're never going to have the lows that the Badgers once had before. And it all goes to him, the foundation that he rebuilt at Wisconsin and how he wanted to go for it. So, yeah. And, and being a Wisconsin kid, watching him walk in, I, I saw that that interview, his introductory uh, speech to us, and I walked in, and I heard him say it, and I'm like, I hope he can do what he says he can yeah. do. And then to win the Rose Bowl in 94, yeah, there was no – he he laid it out there, and then he backed it up 1,000%. There was no other school that I was going to go to. Yeah. I mean, after that speech – yeah. Yeah. And, and he was just open minded about things like us being close with Ron. You know what? Else, I don't know how much people talk about this now. And maybe it was brought up early on in his career. But Ron obviously had the choice. And we're going to do an episode on Ron one of these days, mm -hmm. hopefully even have him on the show. But there Ron probably had an offer from every school in the country. Yeah. And the kicker was, you know, like Ron was a Jersey guy. So I mentioned on one podcast that tri-state area, Penn State's the team. And Joe Paterno said, yeah, we want you here. You're going to be a fullback. Mm -hmm. And that's what every other team said to Ron. You're going to be a fullback because of his size. And the only thing Coach Alvarez said that made a difference was, we'll we'll try a tail with the understanding if it doesn't work a tailback, then you're going to fullback. Mm -hmm. And Ron just said, just give me a chance. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, Ron said that, and the rest was history with Ron. I mean, right. but just him being open-minded to be like, hey, we got a 260-pound kid who's crushing in high school, but can he still produce at the right. college level? And coach was like, yeah, we'll give it a shot. And the other thing, and I know I'm going off topic here, but to talk about with Ron, when we do that Ron episode with, or be, if we do one before we get him on the show, what's amazing about that record, and let's be clear, it is Ron Dana as the record. They bring up all this other BS about fucking bowls and shit and the NC, and NCAA. NCAA is a bunch of NCAA assholes. That's what the NCAA is. Mm -hmm. They're out for fucking money, and that's it. They don't give a shit about anything else. They don't give a shit. About the players, one bit, yeah. Uh, yeah. But it's a business. It, it, it's a hundred percent a business. It's a business for it was a business for everybody except for the players mm -hmm. until NIL came about. Okay. Now, granted, we both agree there needs to be some sort of cap. We can't have these like multi-millionaires in college. It's gonna get carried away. It's got. It, I think there has to be a restriction at some point with the players. I want to. I want to. I want a private jet. I'd love uh, a private jet. But I'd, I'd love a million dollars. I mean, how about even Ron? Like, think about that. In I've joked with Ron about NIL before. But when we were playing, I mean, what did our state at, at the time we were playing? It was probably like around 70,000 Camp Randall. Yeah. You can't tell me there wasn't at least 50,000 Ron Dane jerseys in that stance. Okay. And I mean, and Ron still, you know, getting a 600 a month to pay for rent, food, you know, whatever other expenses you have. And then, you know, your food money runs out. All of a sudden, you're D1 starting tailback, leading the country, and you're eating ramen noodles or whatever. I mean, oh. so, yeah, there needs to be more, but there also needs to be a limit. But uh, I forgot where I was going. Back with Ron. Yeah, just have it. Oh, with the record. So, yeah, banged in the head a couple times. With the record, Ron didn't even start until, I think, the sixth game of his career. And before we do his show, I'm going to take time to do a little homework. Because I didn't do a lot of homework in college. You I, you did any homework. I did homework. Mm -hmm. I, I did homework when I had to do homework. Mm -hmm. eh, I did. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm going to do the math on, let alone the first six games, which is that's crazy that he didn't start the first six games. I want to do the math on how many games we blew people out. That, I, I, there was a handful of games each season where he didn't step foot on the field in the fourth quarter. Right. There were a couple games throughout our career. He didn't even step foot in the second half. Right. So you st I want to start adding up quarters to be like, how much did, was Ron Dane not on the field? Right. You know, and not saying right or wrong. I mean, we had to take him out. We had to rest him. Yeah. We had to, we didn't need him to get injured. But when you look at that, it's almost like he only played three seasons of college football. When you take the first six games he didn't play, 
all the games that he came out in the fourth quarter or the second half. I mean, it's going to almost be like a season of football that wasn't played. Now you look at that record again and say he did it basically in three full seasons. Sure. I mean, <clears throat> but for the NCAA to say, and the whole premise of it, so the audience knows, is they're trying to not count Ron's bowl yards, which Ron yes. blew bowl games out of the freaking water Absolutely. in bowl games, but they're trying to count this other kid's yards. If you count Ron's bowl yards, I think he beats the other kid by over 1,000 yards. Right. I mean, not even close, yeah. but they want to take Ron's bowl yards away, which reduce him because, hell, the two Rose Bowls alone that we played in, Ron had over 500 yards combined right. in two two games, over yeah. 500 yards. It's just absolute nonsense and yeah. one of the hundreds of reasons yeah, why I hate the answer. I'm not sure why, if it's a popularity contest, Bill. I, I don't know what – what edge are they trying to gain? It's just that? the NCAA assholes. They they don't get they don't give a shit about anything other than making money. Okay. That's that's my thing. I mean, yes, when it originated, I understand there was structure, there were rules which needed to be there. Right. But then they took shit too far. I mean, like to our point, even now, look comparing NIL today to what we went through, we would have been suspended from a football game if we took a job bagging groceries at a grocery store. Right. That was how strict things were. Where today it's just like, oh, Joe Blow, you know, I want to give you a Lamborghini. The kid could get it. Mm -hmm. You know, like I'm waiting to see. I pray that these schools are coaching these kids up on having a, uh, CPAs and attorneys come in, setting up LLCs. Are, are we going to see kids going to jail in a couple of years for tax evasion? I mean, are these kids that are getting, you know, $1 million, $2 million, if they're blowing it, I mean, you get one million dollars. I'm, I'm no CPA, but I'm guessing you probably got to put three, four hundred grand aside just for taxes. Are these kids doing it? Like, I don't know. And and that's a real scary thing to say. Like, is the IRS going to be coming after hundreds, if not thousands, of uh, college football players because of taxes? How about the fact that you have an agent now in high school? Like, you almost have to have an agent in high school you for you to be able to negotiate your and I and right. agent manager yeah. uh, lawyer. Lawyer, uh, yeah. I mean, there's a. I, I don't know if we said it on the show or not. There's a high school basketball player. My son knew his name the other day. I can't think of his name. Cooper, Hooper, or Cooper Cup. I don't know, whatever. But hell of a basketball player, number one in the country. He's making four million dollars his senior year of high school. That's crazy. Are you shitting me? Four million dollars, high school kid. But I don't know. Back to this. We're just glad. So glad we're here. We're having a great time. It was awesome seeing Coach. Uh, we sent Mrs. Alvarez our best wishes. Uh, she was busy today. We didn't get to meet up. But uh, we want to thank Linda Wilkins at the University of Wisconsin again for all the help she put into the show. And, uh, yeah, just grateful to be here. Grateful we're doing the show. Uh, great for, grateful for our Albanian friend that's helped us out throughout the throughout the first couple episodes and yeah. all the all the back-end work he's been doing and helping us sound better. We know for the people out there, we've had some ups and downs. We did get lighting. We're working to continually improve our audio, but uh, we're getting there. We have a mission. We're, we're putting the time in. We're researching stuff. But the biggest thing on our end, we're glad you guys are enjoying it as the audience. We're having a blast doing it, and you know we know we're going to keep doing it. And like we said, Already today, we got a couple ideas. We're not going to share them, but for down the road, we are committed, and I already said it, so cat's out of the bag. We are coming back here. We're going to have Coach on again, and uh, it, we're, you know, who knows? Maybe we'll do it at his place. Uh, the Greek's definitely going to be on the show, Absolutely. so you get to meet him, a big Badger supporter. Uh, but, yeah, we got a lot of things down the pipeline that we got to work out. We got people we got to reach out to, but I think we're going to continue telling our story. We're going to have a bunch of different people on the show throughout episodes uh, here and there, but we're excited what the future brings. Mm -hmm. We're excited doing it. We're really pleased that Cabin Coffee's been such a huge sponsor and supporter of us doing this. And um, yeah, coach seemed real excited about the coffee. Let's bring up that. So you, yeah. as the coffee owner, giving yeah. him coffee, then what he experienced at the restaurant? You know, so we, uh, we're a roastery, so we roast on site though. And I roasted the coffee the day, the day before we came out here. So the 20, we are here yesterday, the 20th. I roasted it and uh, had it all ground up. And just because if I'm going to give you a gift, it's going to be coffee because that's what I do. Absolutely. Um, and uh, handed him the coffee. You could smell it through the bag. And he seemed really excited about it. Uh, we go to the restaurant. We won't <laughs> say the name because we don't <laughs> want to hurt no, their feelings. I'm not, gonna, I'm, not, I'm not putting anybody down. I mean, but uh, I, I think Coach Alvarez experienced some of that brown flavored water that was a little weak. And uh, he, he did not like it. He was not a fan of it. And uh, he even he, let them know it was a little bit weak, too. So he, he politely, his opinion, politely. Oh, very, always polite, yeah. always courteous that the coffee was a little weak. And then he says, I can't wait to try this. So 
I hope uh, we get him to be a. It sure fan. smelled good. Even even the Greeks said the car was smelling good with that coffee yeah, in it, sure and was. it's a hell of a smell and, and a great tasting coffee, and it packs a punch too, which. It's got that caffeine. Yeah, I love it. I mean, you know I love it. I'm there all the time yeah. getting as much as I can get from you. Can't get rid of you. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's been fun. Yeah, We've absolutely. been enjoying Naples. Stay tuned. We're going to be dropping podcasts. Our goal right now is Tuesday mornings. We're going to be airing the podcast on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Make sure to smash that follow button. Uh, you'll be seeing funny clips and uh, little sneak peeks on social media, so stay tuned on that. Otherwise, Tuesday morning. Tuesday morning. And again, thanks to our sponsor, Cabin Coffee, located at 2922 Meadowlark Lane in Altoona. Hey, we have a website. If you want to order some coffee from me, do that. Call me. I'll get it out to you. Super simple. And, uh, yeah, we take customer orders. So. And Joe always does it with a smile, too, just like always. he is here. He's always, always. A, always a smiling, happy guy. <laughs> thanks for tuning back. Take care. See you next time. Thank you for listening to Joe and I today. We hope you enjoyed your time with us. If you like what you heard, please give 217 South Mills a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts. Go tell your friends about us. Like and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, X, TikTok, and YouTube. I'd like to thank Cabin Coffee Altoona for sponsoring us. Everything is always better at the cabin. See you next time. And remember, folks, Red Ass the Run.